Good afternoon. Welcome. On behalf of the Anderson uh, Memorial Committee, which is comprised of the Anderson Government, the Anderson Park District, the Forest Hill School District, some dedicated individuals, we are welcoming you today to our Gold Star service. Will you please rise as the color guard presents the color. At this time, I'd like to welcome Mark Jones, the pastor of the Living Church, to have our uh, invitation. Good morning. First, I want to say thank you to those who have served, continue to serve, and to the families who have family members who serve this country. Uh, personally, on behalf of my family, I want to say thank you. Join me if you would in prayer. Father in heaven, we can approach you today because of the grace given to us by the sacrifice of your son, Jesus. And we are incredibly blessed to have this privilege to approach you on this Memorial Day. First, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for this amazing nation in which we live, for this nation's freedom, for this great township, for our nation and its local leaders who serve you by serving us so faithfully. I want to say thank you for the men and women who have served in our nation's past, giving their lives so that we can continue to live in freedom today. And I want to say thank you for those locally, nationally, and around the world who currently right now serve this country, daily risking their lives, fighting for us, for one another, for peace, and for freedom. And Father, I want to say thank you for the families of the men and women who serve this country. Thank you for the moms, the dads, the husbands, the wives, the children, the brothers, the sisters, the grandparents who also sacrifice so their loved ones can protect the freedoms that we enjoy. And God, thank you for being one who understands sacrifice. As you gave your son Jesus to sacrifice for us for a fight for freedom, the freedom of our souls. And on this special day, God, we ask that you give courage to the men and women on the battlefield fighting for our freedom. Would you give protection as they step in harm's way, giving their lives for ours? Would you give comfort to them in their moments of loneliness, pain, and struggle? Or would you grant them endurance, strength, wisdom, character, patience, and perseverance? And Father, would you comfort those who today are grieving the loss of a friend, a family member who served this country. I ask that you would be near them today in their sadness and their loneliness. And Father, I pray for peace. I ask that you would grant us peace, peace to the hearts of those of us present today, peace with you, peace toward one another, and peace for the families of those who have served and continue to serve this great country. <coughs> On this special day, we remember the words of your son, Jesus, who said, there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for his friends. And so today, Father, we give honor to those who lay down and have laid down their lives for our freedom. 
And we ask that you would move in us in this time in which we live to receive and extend your grace. The grace only you provide through your Son, and it is in his name, the name and person of Jesus, we thank you and we pray. Amen.
by Lieutenant Colonel John McRae. In Flanders fields the poppies blow, between the crosses, row on row, that mark our places. And in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, fly, scarcely heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, fell down, saw sunsets grow, loved and were loved. And now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you, the failing hands we throw, the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, ye shall not sleep, though poppies grow and play in Flanders fields. For those of you that are not familiar with a bell ringing ceremony, the bell will be rung once after each name is read in honor of those who have served our country. At this time, I'd like to introduce past commander, Bob Bishop, and I do not have these gentlemen's names, but I can tell you the three <laughs> students that are coming out here to read these names today are leaving as early as next Sunday to serve our country. Lance T. 
Liverpool points. Timothy, Ham, Bell, Lance Corporal, 
Corporal Jonathan W. Graham. Lance Corporal Jordan L. Graham. Captain Barrett, United States Marine Corps. Sergeant Dust Forges, United States Marine Corps. Corporal McGee, United States Marine Corps. Corporal Bordoni, United States Marine Corps. Lance Corporal Wright, United States Marine Corps. Gregory Missman. Billy Spencer. Tyler Swisher. James Lumpkin. Private First Class James Miller IV. First Lieutenant George Grassenberg. Jack McDonald. Major John Paul Oliver, United States Marine Corps. Hospital Corpsman Jeffrey L. Weiner. <coughs> Corporal Dustin A. Erda. <coughs> Staff Sergeant Anthony Hood. <coughs> Lance Corporal Wesley G. Davis. Private First Class, Christopher R. Dixon. Lance Corporal, Nicholas B. Erdy. To all who have served, past, present, and the future, thanks for walking the walk. Please join me in a moment of silence.
yesterday morning They let me know you were gone As soon as the plans we made put an end to you Walked out this morning And I wrote down this song Just can't remember who to send it to I've seen fire and I've seen rain I've seen sunny days and I thought they'd never end I've seen lonely times when I could not find a friend But I always thought that I'd see you again I'm walking my mind to an easy time My back turned towards the sun Knows when the cold wind blows, it'll turn your head around. Cause I was that time on the telephone line, talking about things to come. Sweet dreams and flying machines and pieces on the ground. I've seen fire and I've seen rain. I've seen sunny days and I thought they'd never end. Lonely times when I could not find a friend But I always thought that I'd see you again Won't you look down upon me, Jesus You gotta help me make a stand Just gotta see me through another day My body's aching yeah, my time is at hell No, I won't make it any other way Whoa, whoa, whoa I've seen fire and I've seen rain I've seen sunny days and I thought they'd never end I've seen lonely times when I could not find but I always thought that I'd see you one more time again Thought I'd see you one more time again There's just a few things coming my way this time around Thought I'd see you, thought I'd see you, oh, five and rain looking over Chris Craven's bio and trying to figure out how to introduce him. The only thing I could figure to do to make it a little bit better was to say that he graduated from Anderson High School, but apparently he graduated from Turpin. <laughs> I know you like him. Part of his work is being the National Director of the Canada's Acquisition for the Recruit Military. He's a former NCIS Federal Investigator. He has served eight years on active duty as an infantry marine. Chris was deployed three times, twice in Iraq and also in Afghanistan between 4 and 12. He served as a peer mentor with the Hamilton County Veterans Treatment Corps. He has sat on the boards of the Whole of My, Whole in My Heart Military Family Support Group. He's also assisted the Cincinnati Education Research for Veterans Foundation at the Cincinnati VA. He was decorated with the Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medal with a Combat V for Valor, as well as two Combat Action Ribbons. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Chris Craven. I did this last year and I just came up and stood here, so I'll, uh, I'll read something. Number one, thank you all for being here. Um, family, friends, um, exclusively Gold Star families. It's a uh, it's a rough weekend for all of us, to say the least. You really don't know what to say on Memorial Day. The rest of the time, as my wife will attest to, and most people, I can just pretty much go off the cuff with just about anything. And, um, 
you really got to prepare some for this day to try to get the magnitude of the importance of it across. Uh, so I, I put a few things together, some personal, some things I've come across the years to help me get through and better understand it, and, uh, and hopefully you can take something away from it as well. I've, uh, I've been in three different capacities on Memorial Day over the years. Uh, first, I started off at the Headstones. Uh, I thought that was the place that maybe I'd find find some answers on Memorial Day. I, uh, I got into speaking and I felt like I just came up here and stood here. Uh, and, and the words wouldn't come to me as they normally would. And now I'm here, so we'll just see what this turns into this time around. Uh, I've got the honor, I'm the commander for a disabled American veteran post over in, you know, over in Camp Denison, in Loveland area. And uh, we do a flag running ceremony every year. Uh, we had ours on Saturday. And, uh, Looked at amongst the crowd, and sometimes you want to you want to ask questions on people if they really understand the magnitude of what they're doing and what that flag represents. And um, sometimes I avoid uh, questions if I don't if I don't think I'm going to get the answer that I want. And I think a lot of us do in a lot of different capacities. Uh, so I didn't. Um, I think today I don't have to wonder at all. Looking out on this group, I don't think I have to ask or wonder what the answer will be on why you're all here today. And that means a ton to me to not have to even think about why, not have to ask that question because I think I get the answer that we all want to hear. But Memorial Day has absolutely nothing to do with service, but everything to do with those men and women that have given their life during it. Memorial Day is equally, equally significant for those that have adored a uniform and those that have not. The difference lies in what memories you recall of the fall. Generally speaking, all of us here are giving thanks and celebration that life of the fall has given to us. Yet celebrating the Memorial Day is, is I think, one of the easiest things to say and one of the hardest things to accomplish. For many of us in this crowd, it's remembering the nation's finest and truest heroes, the ones that fell next to us in battle, and the ones that so many waited to walk up the drive that never did again. I want to give some personal insight on some warriors that I had the privilege to, uh, to work with. I think that's the only thing different I bring to the table than just Googling some really great quotes and, and giving you a few experiences. You heard Captain Brandon Barrett's name called today. That, uh, we never served downrange together. Uh, I trained him up, he was a young first lieutenant, and, um, and I moved up to DC for a couple years and missed one deployment with my home unit. I was, uh, I was on leave, uh, headed down 275 at Milford exit, and I got a phone call from a friend from the satellite phone that, uh, that Brandon had passed away. They were uh, in Gormser. That's actually one of, the, one of the two documentaries that HBO did on 1st Battalion 6th grades while they were downrange. I thought the hardest thing would always be being downrange with someone and not being able to save them. But then I realized what the friends and family must feel when they're back here and your world gets rocked by a phone call. And I think that's harder than any person that I don't think we can save downrange was that phone call on 275. As much of a warrior that he was, he was an absolute sweetheart. If you know anything about rank structure, you normally don't get a, normally don't get a, a, a captain in the Marine Corps filling sandbags. They fought 14 days of reinforcing a battle position, and Brandon was helping a private first class who'd been in for about 15 minutes fill sandbags and was struck by a sniper ray. That's leadership. That's a hero after 12 days of fighting to be doing that. It didn't have to. Corporal McGee, the bony both corporals and likely the two best in the battalion in Sangin Valley, Afghanistan. We were the first coalition force to ever go into Sagan. They were we fought for eight days to get to the ground to where we could get to the center city. The city being just about as big as this complex. And they were already back in friendly lines and realized they forgot to get candy for local children that they were having issues with just down below the post. And so they went back out. Within 15 feet of the gate, the suicide bomber had exposed himself right next to McGee and, uh, and Bordoni. And they lost their lives. After fighting and fighting, they were going back out to try to bring a little humanitarian aid to the people that were right outside the wire. Corporal Klinger was on the first light patrol 
in Fallujah. It's one of those things that first patrol, as many of us know, who's going to be the first one to get the first round out, right outside the wire. Klinger was killed on his first combat mission in Fallujah back in 2005. The names that were on your day watched their regions long before they paid the ultimate sacrifice and they'll continue to do so after. Personally, I've struggled with the loss of every life the first day since I watched my first Marine take his last breath of air. Over the years, his experience with death grew, so did my demand for answers. Not only how to cope, but how to justify the loss. I stumbled upon this quote late one night after a particularly difficult death and brought me some peace, and I hope we'll do the same for you. Death is nothing at all. It does not count. I have only slipped away into the next room. Nothing has happened. Everything remains exactly as it was. I am I, and you are you, and the old life that we live so fun and together is untouched, unchanged. Whatever we were to each other, that we still are. Call me by the old familiar name, Speak of me in the easy way in which you always used to, and put no difference in your tone. <coughs> Wear no forced air of sorrow, and laugh at the little jokes that we enjoy together. Play, smile, think of me, and pray for me. Let my name forever be a household word that is always as it was. Let it be spoken without effort, without the ghost of a shadow upon it. Life means all that it ever meant. It was the same as it always was. There is absolute and unbroken continuity. What is death but a negligible accident? Why should I to be out of mind because I am out of sight? I am waiting for you. Formidable. Somewhere very near. Just around the corner. All is well. I continuously fear that the memories of the good and the fallen would cease, and their sacrifice of good deeds that were no longer being pursued. Yet every day in the community what makes these heroes amazing is still occurring in everyday life, and I believe that is where their legacy lives on. It's displayed by a complete stranger, how can you change a tire? Well, no one else would stop. The first to give praise everywhere else except, uh, except, and except none when a project was a success. First one to volunteer and the last ones to leave. It's the ones that you thought were bound for greatness, and you were right. I'm often quoted that the only fine is die in battle. And in the wars that I've fought through, I think that I can stand behind that if nothing else. The memories that flood the veterans in this crowd, the Gold Star families, those that loved fallen warriors and many more, the Memorial Day every minute. Those impacted still wake up saying, I wish it had been me instead. We still get caught off guard by a familiar laugh, or a genuine smile, and a helping hand, an old cologne or a perfume. And it's one less significant person than we have to tell it to. We find ourselves in bed scrolling through hundreds of old pictures attempting to recreate memories that are getting harder and harder to remember. We reach out to those that remember them as well in hopes that the same isn't occurring. We dread the bagpipes, the playing of taps, the 21 gun salute, and the folded flags as they are a constant reminder of what we hold so dear. If you're one of the following, I'd ask you to stand. You are a Gold Star family member. You're a friend of a fallen service member. You served with someone that fell next to you in combat. Please stay standing. On this Memorial Day, if you haven't lost someone that gave their life for this country, the next conversation you have before leaving here should be with one of those people that are standing right here. and ask them about that someone that they lost. And while you'll both be sobbing by the end, Memorial Day will forever mean more for the both of you. The only thing that keeps these memories from fading away are those conversations. Thank you.
Peace, man.